Hi friends, how are you? Um, welcome to today's program, um, A New Life. Uh, we're looking at the 40 day journey. And the book we're working with is The Purpose Driven Life. The whole idea is for us to see how we can work with ourselves to get a new life as we progress in this time. Um, in this time being the life we have now. Now what happens is sometimes we get so uh, so stressed, so challenged, so confused, so frustrated that we just gradually start giving up on life. And when things like that happen, we need to understand why and what's causing all of that. You may think you're on the right track at some point and suddenly it all goes wrong. So you start doubting yourself and you start worrying. And that was one of those times for me. And this was what pulled me to this part where I'm now reading this book, Purpose Driven Life. And the whole idea was to understand what really is my purpose in life. Why are all this happening to me and how can I deal with them? And so for me, I then called it a new life being once this book is fully done, I would have gained quite a lot of new knowledge, new understanding, new lessons that will help me be strong and face life as it should be. So it's a 40 day journey and that's how we say the, the 40 day journey. 40 day journey in the sense the book is a 40 chapter book and when I started one of the first message he gave was you must commit yourself to take on the 40 chapters and just take it on together. So there's no point reading one chapter and running off and then starting again to read another chapter and running off. So in the process of taking it on, I decided, yes, I'm going to just share the message with you. I'm not going to just read it for, for my own benefit alone. I'm going to read it and share it with you. And that's why I decided to take on this program. Okay, so we've done up to 16 chapters so far. And today we're starting chapter 17. Now, usually when I get some messages out of it, I like to also share the messages. Okay, something interesting is coming up now. Um, just a quick call. Okay, something interesting that's coming up is we've decided we're not um, going to show any more live program. For reasons, the technology is a bit too much for us to deal with it. Um, the, the amount of time involved in it is a bit too much for the live pro pro programs to take on. And so the phones we're using are just struggling to cope with it. Um, the internet we have on the phones are struggling and the amount of uh, data that's going into it is also struggling. So the best thing we're doing now is just focus on the on the YouTube, um, uh, we're just recording it for YouTube. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be sharing it as usual onto other platforms. But the main thing is just go on YouTube and watch them because they are definitely there daily as they happen. Usually what we do is we put it up a day after it's been done. Again, we are fast editing them. So apologies for that, but it's nothing. Okay, weird. so we're carrying on with our program. Today is day 17. And um, as usual, we hope we're making any sense to you and things are changing in your life being a new life program. That's what we call it. But as usual, I'd like to just review a few lessons that's come to me while reading through this book. The last chapter was really interesting. It was talking about relationships, time and love. And it says, life without love is worthless. Um, love the Lord your God with all your heart. That was the biggest first commandment. Followed by loving your neighbor as yourself, being the second one. Love leaves a legacy. It's a big thing for us to all take on. Um, because how you treat people, not your wealth, not your accomplishment, is the most enduring impact you leave on this earth. So once life is done and we are finally out of here, what people remember most times is how you treated people, not how much money you had and how much achievements you made. 
time is your most precious asset in life because you have only a set amount of time and that's because we've been clearly told in some on so many platforms that our natural lifespan is between 70 80 100 even 120 at most but that's when you're being super careful with your life or with your body and you're taking all the extra cautions to protect your body so he takes care of yourself and then nothing goes wrong and so you can handle that much time otherwise most times we don't get anywhere near that 70. so that confirms to us that time is so precious and we really have to make the best use of every time that we have and reading that yesterday also has really cleared my head about time and everything i'm doing now i'm being very very careful to remind myself that i'm not wasting my time so you can make more money but you cannot make more time and when you give someone your time you are given a portion of your life that you cannot get back so each time i'm coming here and saying i'm ready to do a program with you that just shows you how much committed i am to supporting you because the time i spend doing this I'm not going to get it back. Um, your time is your life. And, that's, and that is why the greatest gift you can give someone is your time. Again, what I just said. Whenever you give your time, you are making a sacrifice. And sacrifice is the essence of life. Um, use every chance you have to do good to those who need it. Don't wait for tomorrow because you don't know how long you will have the opportunity. So again, I understood this really well. And I underlined that statement very well use every chance you have to do good to those who need it this is a big one for me because there's so many people out there who you think you're being nice to and they don't really need that niceness from you there are so many people who you may think oh yeah i'm gonna do something to them because they're gonna pay me back but that's not what it's all about it's not about you giving somebody something and then getting a, a return do good to those people who need it people who actually need it not people who don't need it okay um where are we again okay so he said people die uh, opportunities change people move children grow up there are no guarantees of tomorrow so whatever you're doing do it with a guarantee that you don't know what tomorrow is going to be about and that's where we have there's that book we look we looked at the first few times we started the power of now uh by Eckhart Tolle now is what's important not tomorrow because you don't know tomorrow um in our final moments we all realize that relationships are the most important things we don't ask to see our iphone 10 i just put that in because now we're looking at iphone 8 and it's getting to 9 and 10 and who knows how far iphone's gonna go but you get all of us getting excited about such things and spend so much money buying such things um, the gold wrist watch that we worry about, the designer clothes, the jewelry, the perfumes, the shoes, the special cars, the fantastic homes. All of that will not count at all when that final moment comes. And all we then we ask to see our loved ones and that reminds us to really, really invest in relationships. So invest in relationships is spend your time with the right people, work with the right people, um, share what you know, what you have, like knowledge is power share with people who need it like i'm doing here now you know with my braiding skills and my braiding training and my you know weave skills and wig making skills i share it and i'm happy to share it and when you share you're making god proud of you because god god walks through us god flows through us so it is so important that we learn to do the right thing and stop stressing ourselves out over things that don't add any value to our lives so anyway so that was a review of yesterday and today we're going to start looking at chapter 17 which is day 17. so day 17 is about a place to belong that's the chapter it says a place to belong this is quite interesting because um when i read it i was really excited as well it says we you are members of god's own family citizens of god's own country and you belong to god's household with every other christian so this chapter is really focusing on Christianity um, and it's about how he's guiding us to really take our faith and our belief very seriously. And this uh, passage was from Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19. He said, God, God family is the church of the living God and the pillar and foundation of the truth. Hi, 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 Fortune. How are you? <laughs> you just said hi. How is the family? Hope everyone's fine. 
Okay, God family is the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of the truth. And that's 1 Timothy verse, chapter 3, verse 15. So, we're going to concentrate so much now on Christianity and see how we as Christians are going to grow on this earth. You said we are called to belong, not just to believe. And so you know that most times for us Christians, we think about believing all the time. But this chapter is reminding us that we don't just believe, but we belong. He said, even in the perfect sinless environment as Eden, remember Adam and Eve in Eden, God said it is not good for man to be alone. So the idea is not for us to be alone, but for us to be long, belong to something. So we are created for community. So we're created for community, we are fashioned for fellowship. We are formed for a family. So none of us can fulfill God's purpose by being alone, by ourselves, as loners, and in isolation. Nobody can do any of those things being alone. You can only fulfill God's purposes by belonging to a community. And the Bible has no history of solitary lonely saints you've heard of so many saints in the bible it says there's no history of any of them that were lonely completely lonely achieving results all by themselves it says spiritual hermits or isolated um spiritual hermits isolated from other believers and deprived of the fellowship so the message here is the bible has no history of such people they were all alone hermits nobody in touch with them and they achieve great things no no such thing exists the Bible says we are put together, joined together, built together, members together, hairs together, fitted together, and held together, and will be cut up together. So the Bible is telling us this. So remember the title, A Place to Belong. So it's about belonging to something. And we're not on our own anymore. The Bible confirmed that. So, while our relationships with Christ is personal, God never intended it to be private. Our relationship with Christ is personal, but is not private. In God's family, we are connected to each other and will be for eternity. We are connected to each other. That's a big thing we really must pick out of this. Bible says, in Christ, we who are many form one body. So we are many of us, but we end up forming one body because of Christ. And each member belongs to all the others. So we are all one body and we belong to each other. So you discover your role in life through your relationship with other people. Through your relationship with other people. This is quite interesting because the other day I just went out. Um, I just had a walk and I went to the seaside. And I saw so many people just walking by. And the, and the thought just hit me. You know, you, 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 you start up a business and you have a product and you want to sell something. And the question becomes, who do you sell to? Who is buying your product? Because without people buying, you don't have a business. Without people buying, all the product you're trying to make goes nowhere. It means absolutely nothing. So the same thing this is trying to explain to us. We cannot claim to be God's children when we are all by ourselves. We have to belong somewhere. And so you discover your role in life through your relationship with other people. Your relationship. What are you doing with other people? Say so for the organs of your body to fulfill their purpose, they must con they, they, they become, they must be, connected to your body so look at us humans we have various parts so the hand the legs the eyes the ears and so for them to become useful they are connected to create a role and that's the same thing with the human relationship that's the same thing with communities we must be connected in order for us to make sense he said, the same is true for us to be part of Christ's body by being part of a local church. And so now he's coming down to how do we connect as Christians? 
And he says the only way we can connect is through being a member of a church. He said the church is God's agenda for the world. God put the church together. That's his agenda to reach us. And so Jesus said, I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. He says the church is so significant that Jesus died on the cross for it. So Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. But remember, remember this, the church is a community of believers. It's a group of believers, people who believe in you know, the, the teachings of Jesus Christ and how Jesus died on the cross for us and everything that you know, God has taught us. So this group of people have come together to share their experiences together. So what he's advising is you cannot isolate yourself and then you turn around and you say you are a Christian. Then you must belong somewhere. And so the Bible calls the church the bride of Christ and the body of Christ. And God commands, commands us to love the church as much as Jesus did. The Bible says a Christian without a church home is like an organ without a body. A sheep without a flock, a child without a family. So you are a Christian telling yourself you are a Christian and you don't have a church that, you know, you go to listen and hear the words of God and meditate and, you know, connect with the spirit. That when you do that, you don't really, you're not really practicing what God taught you. And so you're like a child without a family and you're like a sheep without a flock. And you're like a body without organs. Or an organ without a body so it is an unnatural state so being, a, being in isolation and claiming that you're Christian is not normal it's not natural the Bible says we belong in God's household with every other Christian so for you to make sense of your Christian your Christian family or your Christian life you have to belong to this family of Christians many believe one can be a good Christian without joining or even attending a local church but God would strongly disagree with that so I, I hear that all the time and I'm sure I've said that a few times oh yeah but what do I need to go to church for when I can just sit on my own and pray yeah it's a good thing to do that but you can't necessarily say you're doing the right thing because you're the one talking to yourself you're trying to interpret the Bible your own way you need to go somewhere and at least hear other people put their take on whatever sermon that was or whatever passage that was and so many believe can many believe one can be a good christian without joining or even attending a local church but god would strongly disagree bible offers many compelling reasons for being committed and active in a local fellowship and he starts to explain to us why it's important that we must belong to a church he says the church family identifies you as a true believer of christ Jesus said, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciple. So you loving one another in church will prove to the world that you are Christ's disciple. You are not the body of Christ on your own. So we remember, remember we talked about isolation. You cannot be on your own and tell yourself you are part of the body of Christ. You need others to express that. And together, not separated, we are his body. So when we become one body, not separated, not in isolation, we become God's children. Number two, a church family moves you out of self-centered isolation. So once you belong to a local church and you attend the church and you're part of it, doing things with them, it takes you away from self-centered isolation when you want to be all by yourself. Your local church is a classroom for learning how to get along in God's family. You go to church, that's how you learn how to become part of God's family. It is a lab for practicing unselfish, sympathetic love. So you go to church often, you find that there are things you will get involved with that takes you away from this self-centeredness. As, as, as a participating member, you learn to care about others and share the experiences of others. And so remember, it's a community. It's like a family. So people come with individual problems and individual issues and individual experiences. And so when you come together and you share it, you are sharing things with your, your family. 
So this is God's family, where people are coming and being themselves and being happy with each other. If one part of the body suffers, all the other parts suffer with it. Or if one part of our body is honored, all the other parts share in its honor. So when good things happen in church, everybody's happy. And when sad things happen, everybody's sad. So we all share in one body. It's the only regular contact with ordinary, imperfect believers can we learn real fellowship and experience the New Testament truth of being connected and dependent on each other. So by regular contact with these people in the church, you then get to understand what real people are going through in life. Because most times, as you are in isolation, you just think yours is possibly the worst experience or the best experience. But when you are in a community of other believers and you're hearing what is going on, you then begin to understand that, yeah, it's not as bad as you thought it was. So Bible fellowship is being committed to each other as we are to Jesus Christ. And he quotes this, 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. Jesus laid his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. See, remember we mentioned sacrifice in the, in the last chapter. This is what it's all about. When you give a part of you for the sake of other people, that's sacrifice. And Jesus did it for us. So we should be able to do that to our members of our community being the church. This is the love God expects us to show other believers. A willingness to love them in the same way Jesus loves us. So he explains again, number three. Church family helps us develop spiritual muscles. You know, when you want to you want to improve on your muscles, you go to the gym and you stretch out and stretch out constantly. For a period, your muscles start to improve. But if you're not actually doing that, nothing happens. And this is what he's trying to explain to us. that When we try to begin to look into our spirituality, you cannot sit at home and achieve it. By going to church, your spiritual muscles start to develop. And we will never grow to maturity just by attending, attending worship services and being a passive spectator. So when you start being part of a local church, don't just attend church and walk home and attend and walk home. You have to participate. You have to be a proper member of that church and not just a spectator. A spectator is the person who just comes to watch, you look, you walk away. That's not what he's asking us to do. So we'll never grow to maturity just by attending worship services and being a passive spectator. Only participation in, in the full life of a local church builds spiritual muscles. So when you start attending the local church, get involved with everything going on there. Because that's when you start realizing that, yes, there's a part of you that really belongs somewhere. Bible says, as each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow. So when you're in church and you're participating, parts of you will start coming out. And when you start contributing, you help other people also grow and develop. So, so that the whole body is healthy and growing enough and full of love. So the more we contribute and participate, we're helping others grow. And then what happens? The church becomes bigger and healthier. Over 50 times in the New Testament, the, the phrase one another or each other is used in the New Testament. Over 50 times, one another or each other is used. This is just to explain what community means. He said, we are commanded to love each other, pray for each other, encourage each other, admonish each other, greet each other, serve each other, teach each other, accept each other, honor each other, bear each other's burden, forgive each other, submit to each other, be devoted to each other, and it just carries on. It says 50 times in the, old, in the New Testament, the Bible devoted that much time to talking about each other. Now that is what they call community, because it's reminding us that we cannot operate in God's family in isolation. That's why it's a family. Family means more. It's not just you. It is easy to be holy when, one, when no one else is around to frustrate your preferences. So when you're all alone doing your thing, you think, oh yeah, I'm so holy. But the most important thing, which is one of the things we learned in the last chapter as well, was about working with other people. 
the minute you have relationship with other people, you start to understand other people's shortcomings. And he explained it to say they may not be perfect. They may be they 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 they, they, they may not be what you are expecting. But what God is expecting from us is to learn to love, no matter how imperfect this person is. And so that's what he's also explaining here too. That when you are walking in isolation, spiritually, you think you are holy, all is well. The minute you start to walk with other people and begin to understand their differences, frustration comes in and preferences comes in. So that's when you now are challenged. And when you are challenged and you overcome it, now your spiritual muscle is getting stronger. So this, it says, it is easy to be holy when no one else is around to frustrate your preferences. So when there's nobody else to make you think about what you're doing and all your decisions are by yourself, you think you're perfect. This is false and is untested holiness. So if that's what you've been doing, it is not true because it hasn't been tested. Have you had anyone frustrate you? Have you had anyone stop you? Have you had anyone question you? Until that happens, you are false. He said, isolation breeds, breeds deceitfulness. So when you're all by yourself, you're deceiving yourself. It is easy to fool ourselves into thinking we are mature if there is no one to challenge us. So by you being alone and taking your decisions, you think in your head, I'm perfect. Until someone comes to tell you, no, what you're doing is not right. This is how it should be done. And then now you're being tested. Until you're being tested, you are not matured enough. Real maturity shows in relationships. So the more you start interacting with other people and getting other people's viewpoints about different things, that's when you know that you are matured. Because, you know, in a way you could be looking at democracy where people allow other people to make decisions and you all share it and sometimes you say okay how many people hands hands up if we're gonna do this this way and then majority votes and then you go okay whoever what for whatever reason it may not be what i want but majority have spoken and that's how the church of god should be like as well says the body of christ needs you god has a unique role for you to play in his family this is called ministry, and God has gifted us for this assignment. So every one of us, we have something to contribute to God's family. We have something to contribute to our local church. And it's asking us to please remember that God loves the church. Jesus came and died for the church in order for, for us to grow it. A spiritual gift is given to each of us as a means of helping the entire church. And we are individually gifted to contribute to our local church. So now this is a big role for all of us to start thinking about. Because we cannot say to ourselves that we're Christians and we stand in isolation. We must belong somewhere and be able to contribute and take on other people's issues and share things with each other. He said, we, are, we may have wider ministries, but these are additions. So we may have other things that God has added to us, but the biggest of them all is for us to go and use our gifts in the church and contribute to its growth. He said, you will share in Christ's mission in the world. When Jesus walked the earth, God walked through the physical body of Christ. Today, he uses his spiritual body. The church is God's in instrument on earth. As members of Christ's body, we are his hands, we are his feet, we are his eyes, and we are his heart. So the church is everything God wants us to be on this earth. He walks through us in the world. We each have a contribution to make. And Paul tells us, he creates all of us, I mean each of us by Jesus Christ, to join him in the work he does. The good work he has gotten ready for us to do. Work we had better be doing. So every role that we have to play in church, we better get up and start doing it. Because that's why we are here. We are his eyes, we are his, you know, we are his feet, we are his heart, we are his hands. So whatever we are doing in church, God is working through us. A church family will help you from backsliding. 
And I remember hearing this word a long time ago as a young child. Backsliding is when you suddenly going back on what you knew. So none of us are immune to temptation. And that's what it's all about. Because you may have grown spiritually up to a point. Suddenly you're left alone all by yourself. Temptation comes at all times in our lives. To all of us. He said this, none of us are immune to temptation. This is why, this is why assigned us as individuals the responsibility of keeping each other on track. So the church now is giving us the opportunity to keep each other on track. And so while we're in church, if things are happening that shouldn't happen, the other member will support you and guide you and hold you back. So Bible says, encourage each other daily so that none of us may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. You know, the world is, is so full of it. I mean, sometimes like um, I personally, before I decided to take on this book, you've seen all the books that I read. I, I've, I've shown you some of them. Um, Stillness Speaks, Discover the Power Within You, As a Man Thinketh. The Strangest Secret, psycho um, what's this one here? A New Earth, um, it just goes on. Um, the Seeker's Guide, uh, Mind Power, um, Coming to Our Senses is this one. It's quite a big one, Coming to Our Senses, which I have not started. Um, there's more here, Think and Grow Rich, spiritual interpretation interpretation of scripture um the keys and i had to take them to show you all of that because i am constantly trying to understand myself trying to understand what life is all about i mean there's an interesting book i have and it says man search for meaning happened to have left it in Nigeria because when I traveled there sometimes I take my books with me that just covers it all man search for meaning we're constantly someone like me I'm constantly trying to understand the reason for being here and that's why the title of this book really hit me you know the purpose driven life so the minute I read these books my state of mind will be perfect I'll be so excited I'm carrying on with things give me two days and I'm off it and I'm back to zero like it never happened. So this book trying to tell us here that it is so easy. None of us is immune from temptation really has hit it on the head. No matter what you think you are at every point in time, you need to constantly be on top of it. You need to constantly remind yourself who you are. You need to constantly stay in touch with God. And that's what the Bible aims to do with us as well when we read passages and we say, oh yes, God is there with me all the time. The minute you forget to read your Bible, back, zero. The, the devil has come. And so that's what he's trying to explain to us, that he encourage each other daily so that none of us may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Because deceitfulness is everywhere. It's everywhere. You don't need to be... I don't even need to explain this to you because it happens to all of us, to the strongest of us. So as Christians, we are commanded to be involved in each other's spiritual growth. So if you want to stay strong mentally and spiritually and be with God guiding you, because he is the one who sent you here, you need to be reminded of what is going on around you. And that's where the church comes in. So as James writes, if you know people, who have wandered off from God's truth, don't write them off. Go after them and get them back. We need spiritual growth because spirituality is the only thing that reminds us why we're here. It's the only thing that strengthens our ability to deal with daily life. I mean, today I was having a chat with my, my kids and somebody, one of them was telling me an 11 year old went and committed suicide. 11 year old over what 11 year old has a girlfriend at 11 and then some joke there were some prank that was going on and the little girl now says oh she's dead she's she's dead and then what happened the 11 year old boy goes to kill himself now isn't that madness 
That's just madness and that's what's going on with the world because when we lack spirituality, we get lost. And that's why there's so much suicide on the high. A lot of things are going wrong. We live in an era where people think everything is about money. You remember when I mentioned that not that last day would you remember you had a Bugatti, you had a Ferrari, you had 20 houses all over the world, your ticket was, uh, that you, you own a jet because we're not talking about first class anymore, we're talking about jets now. Oh, do, do you have the key to the jet? No, I don't have the key. Do you have the key to yours? And so everyone just lives in this time where we think everything in life is about materialism. But if we are in a, in, a, in, in a community that's helping to hold us together, that's reminding us of what the Bible says, that's supporting our spiritual strength, all of these things will just pass you by. You won't even give, you won't even bat an eyelid over it. And so James says, if you know people who have wandered off from God's truth, because everything we're talking about here is all about God's truth. And God's truth is reminding us constantly that naked we came and naked we will go. And if your role on this earth is to allow God to flow through you, to contribute something to the world, and you are being deceived by the devil to think that all you should be doing is chase the longest um, uh, um, wig, 30 inch wig, and look like a mermaid, then, then you haven't achieved anything. Then you, you're being misled. You could look as beautiful as you want to look, but still carry on focusing and doing God's work. But some of us forget that. We think that that is for other people. And our role is just to look like that and walk the streets and become celebrities overnight. That's not what the what the God's you know God's truth is about. And so it says a local church provides spiritual protection and responsibility to God, protect, defend and care for the welfare of his flock. So you're belonging to a local church will help to stabilize you, will help to sanitize you, will help to strengthen you. So that's the big message here today. Find yourself a local church and start thinking, how do I develop spiritually? He says the devil loves detached believers. So if he finds you isolated all by yourself and constantly telling yourself, oh yeah, but I'm very strong spiritually, the, the devil will make a big scene out of you. And that's when you, you wear off. That's when you derail. He says, the devil, the devil loves detached believers, isolated from God's family, un, unaccountable to spiritual leaders because he knows they are defenseless and powerless against his tactics. So if he finds you all by yourself, you're defenseless. So find yourself a local church and belong to it. It's all in the church. And so God created the church to meet our five deepest needs. And he explains what these needs are. The first one is a purpose to live for. So the first thing you want to ask yourself is, what purpose am I here for? And that's why I chose to read this book. All right, number two is people to live with. This is where we talked about relationship. You cannot live in isolation and think that you're doing an amazing job. The third one was principles to live by. So what principles are guiding you? What makes you who you are? The fourth one was profession to live out. So what kind of, what roles, what talents, what, what abilities can you share with the world? And the fifth one was power to live on. So what helps you stabilize? What keeps you going? So those are the five principles and the church helps you to achieve that. So God's purpose for his church are very similar to our individual purpose. And this is, God, this is the church uh, purpose. Worship help, helps us to focus on God. So when we're in church and we're worshiping, we focus on God. So fellowship helps us to face life's problems. So in the fellowship of God, you are in church and everybody is sharing their issues together. It helps you to deal with life's problems. Discipleship helps to fortify our faith. So as members of a church, your faith is held together. Ministry helps find our talents. So while you're working for the church, you find that things that you are great at is what you will bring to the church. And that's when you discover your purpose as well. You discover the talent that you have to share. 
I remember I belonged to a church once and um, and I naturally flowed towards entrepreneur uh, entrepreneurship and I encourage women to you know use your skills use your hands achieve great things be able to use your hands and you gain something because God gave you hands for a reason and uh, and I remember the lady who was running the church had issues with me because she thought no you shouldn't bring that to church that's not for church and I thought are you kidding how do you want these women to contribute to church if they don't have a job where's the money going to come from we obviously need our individual contribution to help keep the church running so if you are encouraging them to just sit down and be idle and do nothing they're not going to be able to bring any money in and then you're going to turn around and complain that the church is not growing so you see my little contribution to the church i knew i had something to give and that's what it is when you are in church you bring your little bit what you are great at and then you help the church to grow and so the last part was evangelism helps fulfill our mission so those are the five purposes of the church so now he explains our choice he said the choice we have he said whenever a child is born they automatically belong or become a part of the universal family of human beings so once a child is born that child needs an immediate family to grow to groom him or her and nurture him with care to become healthy and strong so once a child is born you automatically a human being and so in the whole world you belong to a human family right but after that that child needs to be groomed and nurtured in order to achieve great things for the world but the same is needed spiritually so it's not just enough to feed the child grow the child and just let the child be because what's happening to our world today if you ask me honestly is that lack of spirituality lots of us don't want to know we think we just appeared We've never asked the question, where did we really come from? Where would we be going to? Why are we here? What's our role here? Are we achieving our role? Those are the questions that comes with spirituality. Because once you begin to question things like that, your role here will just be like anybody else. And we need to deal with that. And that's why I took time out to read this book and share it with you. Because it's not just enough to say, let me go earn money. Everybody wants to earn money. Everybody wants to pay bills. The last chapter reminded us of that. It's not just about paying bills. That's not why we're here. It's not just about making so much money and buying all the material things we can buy. I mean, if you ask me, I've tried all that. It doesn't give you any satisfaction at all. You wake up and you still feel empty. And that's because your spirituality is lacking. So this is a part of us that really needs to be fulfilled. And that's why books like this take us back to understanding who we are. And I know some people say, oh yeah, but I read my Bible. Most times you read your Bible because you're not spiritually connected. You don't get any message out of it. You are completely lost. It's like reading any other book. But when you read books that are touching and going, taking you back to the Bible and is explaining their understanding of different roles, it brings something to you. The same is in there spiritually. When you become spiritually aware, you become born again. So born again, a new life, a new beginning, a new awakening is about understanding. It's about what Solomon was saying that above all things gain understanding. If you don't have understanding, how are you ever going to know what you're dealing with? So being aware spiritually is about being born again. And then you automatically become a part of God's universal family where you need to be a member to express God's desires. The difference between attender or church member, some of us just attend church, we've talked about it, and some of us are full members of a church and he begins to explain what the differences are. He says members are committed to the church. So when you're committed to the church, you get to know what's going on in the church. You participate, you attend, and you are part of everything going on. Attendees are just spectators. You just come and you sit down and you stand up and you sing and you dance and you walk away. He says members get involved. Members contribute. 
attendees just consume they just come and consume whatever's there the knowledge that's going on the sermon that's happening if there was a little party that day you just eat whatever there is to eat um they want benefits without responsibility so they just come to church and whatever's going on be part of it no responsibility in acts the christians in jerusalem were very specific in their commitment to each other they were devoted to fellowship and so the bible says they committed themselves to teaching of the apostles the life together the common meal the prayer so all of these things are what members do in a church and god expects us to commit to the same things today this encourages fellowship that makes you stronger in christ so when you commit by being a member in a church you are actually encouraging the growth of the christian faith you're encouraging the growth of christ's own body you're encouraging the growth of god's dream for the world okay so that's the end of that chapter today but before we go as usual we will do the question and we'll do our meditation so the question is does my level of involvement in my local church demonstrate that love and commit and am i committed to god's family so you need to find out from yourself that you need to ask yourself that and if you find you're not it's not too late you need to just go and belong to a church and participate be committed give it your best because there's something about you that god wants you to share in that church meditation in christ we who are many form one body and each member belongs to all the others so in christ we are many all of us are many but because we're in christ we are one body and that means we all belong to each other and we're there to support each other and this is in romans 12 verse 5. so thank you so much for listening today um we appreciate all your questions we appreciate all your support we appreciate you watching this and gaining knowledge from it we hope it's making sense to you um, like like we normally say please feel free to email us and chat with us about everything that we talk about in this particular program that's you know doing anything in your life helping not really happy whatever's happening we would like to share with you so thank you again and god bless you eternally